Throughout the previous videos in this series, we have looked at the Acon Digital Mastering Suite plugins in the context of mixing audio recordings. But now, we will look at them in a more familiar environment on the Master Bus. There are many ways and techniques to connect all the instruments of the mix, but the simplest and most effective is to use a compressor on the master bus, which glues together the sound of the mix. It's a good idea to start with the little glue preset and then tweak it to your liking. Since we're working with the whole mix, we'll set channel linking to 0% so that the left and right channels are processed independently. Stereo compression on the master can ruin the mix, making it constricted and narrow. With the sidechain filter, I cut the low frequencies on the detector signal so that the compressor doesn't kick in from the low frequency bass and drum signals. In general, if you look at the Dynamics plugin settings on the master channel, you can see that I try to have minimal impact on our mix. The ratio is 1.5 to 1, soft knee, auto release, 10 ms delay, maximum oversampling level, all for the sake of transparency and invisibility of processing. Nevertheless, such an imperceptible compression still gives the expected effect to glue the scattered elements of the mix together. Even just 1.5 decibels of compression at the loudest peaks is enough to make the mix sound like a whole. Next to Dynamics on the Master Channel, I use Equalize 2, which slightly adjusts the frequency response of our mix. In most situations, it will work in the mid or side mode for me since I will most likely want to cut excess low frequencies in the side channel, as well as work with high frequencies to make the mix seem wider. Let's maximize the resolution of the graph and take a closer look at the adjustments. Boosting the treble by one decibel using the high frequency shelf in the side channel while cutting off the treble in the mid channel works wonders. The mix is simultaneously wider, has more air and is softer. Also, pay attention to the lower mids. I attenuate the frequencies slightly around 250, 500, 600, and 1000 Hz to balance the mix and make it less boomy. Some bands only affect the mid channel, which makes the side channel appear fuller as we move the listener's focus from center to the edges of the mix. These adjustments are very accurate, no more than 0.5 dB, but on the master channel it is essential. At this stage, after using Dynamics and Equalize on the master, the mix already sounds stable, solid, and we can move on to more subtle adjustments of the Dynamics using multiband Dynamics, which will help improve the balance between different frequency bands, primarily between low and mid frequencies. I set the crossover frequencies in such a way that the kick and the lowest notes of the bass were present in the low frequency band with a crossover at around 140 Hz. The lower mid band in turn contains the lower notes of voices, guitars and synthesizers. This is the area that gives warmth to a mix and which we must not forget about when processing. For the upper mid-band, I left the so-called intelligibility of the instruments, vocals, guitars, keys, drum, bass, everything sounds here. This is the region from 700 Hz to almost 5.5 kHz, 
Well, and everything above I do not compress at all, so the high frequencies sound natural and airy. Before we move on, let's hear how the mix will sound without dynamics, equalize 2 and multiband dynamics on the master bus. The difference in sound before and after the processing is not dramatic, but you might have noticed that the mix after our manipulations became a little cleaner, more legible, wider, neater and more solid. Next, the plugin in the chain I used was, of course, Limit. This is the peak limiter that will allow us to achieve the target output volume. For most streaming platforms, this value will be around minus 14 laughs, and it won't be difficult to achieve it. However, if you analyze the loudness of the Billboard Hot 100 records, you will notice that many of them are still compressed quite a lot, down to minus 5 laughs. Such an extreme is still rather a rarity, but values from minus 8 to minus 10 laughs are most common. So let's try to bring the volume of our mix to that level, and see if the limit can handle the load. Let's start with the standard minus 14 laughs, and work our way up. I don't see any reason to go above 12 decibels gain for the input, since distortions become noticeable, but we can get to this value without obvious negative consequences for the sound of our mix. This efficiency and limit is achieved through the two stages of processing, compression using the pre-compressor, which trims the dynamics of the audio recordings before they are limited, in the second stage using peak suppression. As with other plugins, in the Acon Digital Mastering Suite, we can process the left and right channel of audio recordings independently and limit. This goes for both the pre-compressor and in the peak suppression. I generally recommend to set channel linking at 0% wherever possible, but for peak suppression, you might want to use stereo processing so that the mix does not start to fall apart during the hard limiting process. Shifting the stereo image left or right if a very loud instrument or effect is played from the side channel. You might have noticed that I use four times over sampling and limit. In addition to combating aliasing, it is needed here to control signals through peaks. The point is that when a digital recording bar mix is converted to analog, for example for listening, the peaks of the reconstructed analog signal may exceed the limit of 0 dBFs. Let me demonstrate this. To begin with, I'll overcompress the mix extremely to make the effect more obvious. Without oversampling, we get plus 0.3 dB, even though the output level is set to 0 dB.
Let's use two times over sampling. Now the excess is no more than plus 0.1 dB. But as soon as we set the oversampling to times 4, any excess of the specified output level will be excluded. Since the resolution of the process signal is sufficient, the plugin to be able to suppress even the shortest excess of the maximum output volume we have set. A simple and elegant solution to the very important problem of digital audio signal processing. Last but not least, I use Dither on the master channel, which allows for the least lossy export of the original 64-bit mix to lower resolution audio files, such as 24 or 16 bits, by adding random low-level noise to the audio signal. We can move the spectrum of the added noise to a less sensitive area of the human hearing using the Enable Noise Shaping function, and then fine-tune the processing using the filter lengths and max noise shaping parameters. But in most situations, the standard processing values will work best. If you're exporting a mix for printing a CD, feel free to use the 16-bit aggressive noise shaping preset and forget about any nightmare quantization errors. But does Dither have any effect on the sound of the mix? Let's check. I only hear significant changes in sound when choosing to lower the bit depth to 12 or 8 bits. For 16 bits, the level of the added noise is still far below the threshold of human hearing, and even more so for 24 bits. Throughout this video, we looked at the processing on the master bus in Cubase, which cannot be fully called a traditional mastering process, since when exporting audio recordings, Cubase will perform a huge amount of calculations, processing individual mix tracks, group tracks, effect tracks, automation, and the master bus. If you're worried about possible errors in the process of exporting audio recordings, it is best to export the mix without processing on the master bus and do the classic mastering process in a separate audio editor such as Acon Digital Acoustica. Among the advantages of this approach is the possibility to use a variety of analyzers and audio meters, as well as a better visualization of the mix itself, since we see it here as a simple stereo file. If necessary, we can make automation on it or even remove clicks and noise if the mix was mixed elsewhere and there's no way to go back to the mix project and fix the problem there, but that's a completely different story. Thanks so much for being with us throughout this video series on working with the Acon Digital Mastering Suite plugins package. If you previously used these devices only in the process of mastering audio recordings, now you know that they work great in mixing projects too. And if this is your first time encountering the Acon Digital Mastering Suite plugins, I hope we've given you some ideas on how you can use them effectively to make your mixes sound even more impressive. Thank you, and see you next time.